Hey guys, 22 Flinkster here. Ever since the Mark IV was introduced about a month ago, I've been averaging probably close to 15 messages and emails asking which pistol I recommend, the Smith & Wesson Victory or the Ruger Mark IV Target. Now, that's kind of a loaded question because my opinion is just that. It's my opinion. But I will go over as best as I possibly can, tell you the pros and cons of both handguns. Before I get too far in the video, I must say, I like both handguns. I like them a lot. Um, I've been shooting the Victory now for about close to two years, and I've been shooting the Mark IV for a couple of months. I have put thousands of rounds uh, through each handgun, and so I will tell you what I have found that I like about certain uh, handgun and what I don't like about a certain handgun. Now, I'm not going to be doing an accuracy test by no means on these things. Uh, if you want to see how accurate they are, just watch my reviews on them. They both shoot very well, but I'm not going to sit here and shoot down range, shoot one and shoot the other and say, hey, this one's more accurate than the other. That's not a fair test, and that's not a fair test at all, but I can say that both handguns shoot very, very well. First, let's look at the Mark IV since it is the newest. Now this is the target model that I have in my hands. And what has attracted so many people to this pistol since it's been released is this right here, okay? Make sure the firearm is unloaded and the safety is on. This right here. It is very, very easy to take apart and clean. Unlike its predecessor, the Mark II uh, and Mark III, and of course also the Mark I. Now, the uh, Smith & Wesson Victory is very easy to take apart and clean also. However, it does require an Allen wrench to do so. Now, that's not a deal breaker for me by no means, but just the simplicity of taking it apart and putting it back together, I would have to give the Ruger Mark IV uh, just a little bit of edge on that. Now, one thing that is nice about the Smith & Wesson Victory compared to the Mark IV is that the Smith & Wesson Victory comes with a rail on top. Now, uh, rails do not come with the Mark IVs. You have to buy them separately. They usually run about $25 to $30, but the rails are aluminum. The rail that comes with the Smith & Wesson Victory is polymer. Now, uh, I've heard some complaints about the polymer rail um, from my viewers. And I went ahead and went with a uh, Vokortsen rail for the top of my Victory. Now that seemed to fix a few problems I had with siding issues. I didn't have that many with the polymer rail, but I did experience a little bit of shift, um, especially if I hadn't shot the pistol in a while. But it does at least come with a rail, and the Mark IV does not. Let's talk about the sights for a little while. The Mark IV has blacked out target sights. I prefer target sights when I'm trying to do pinpoint accurate shots, okay? If I'm trying to shoot an aspirin off a nail or split a playing card, I prefer a target sight. The Smith & Wesson Victory has a three dot targeting sight um, and they are fiber octave. I'm not a big fan of fiber octave sights, especially on a target pistol. However, I do like the Smith & Wesson Victory uh, fiber octave sights. They are just the right size that they don't blind your target too bad, um, but they're not, you know, too small that you can't see them. So I really do like the fiber octave sights on the Smith & Wesson Victory, but if I'm trying to do precision shots, I much rather have target sights. Now let's talk about the grip. The Mark IV target model has an aluminum grip, okay? The Hunter has a stainless steel grip, uh, but the Mark IV target has an aluminum grip. The Smith & Wesson Victory has a polymer grip, okay? And if you recall back in my video talking about the Smith & Wesson Victory, the only downfall to that pistol that I thought of was the grip. I wasn't a big fan of the grip. It was very slick in my hands. It was hard for me to get a good purchase. The shape, uh, I wasn't really happy with the shape, but I could live with it. But it was just the grip and the grip panel. I just wasn't a big fan. I guess a lot of it has to do with, I'm used to shooting Ruger pistols. I've been shooting Ruger pistols ever since I was knee high to a grasshopper. So they just naturally fit in my hand well. These are, uh, you know, have a very aggressive checkering on the sides of both of these grip panels, and it makes it easy to get a purchase. Now, however, if you have smaller hands, the Smith & Wesson Victory will probably fit your hands better. Both triggers on the Mark IV and also the Smith & Wesson Victory are set at between four and four and a half pounds. Now, to me, on target pistols, that's a little heavy, okay? But that's how they come from the factory. One trigger is not necessarily better than the other. 
I have to lean more towards the Victory Trigger being a little bit lighter than the Mark IV. Even though the Mark IV Trigger isn't bad by no means, it's, and it's a vast improvement over the Mark III's, but I do think the Victory Trigger is just a tad bit better. One thing that the Mark IV has one up on the Smith & Wesson Victory is ambidextrous safeties. Okay, you can control the safety on both sides of the pistol, whether you are right-handed or left-handed. I guess there's probably about a 90 to a 95% chance that you are a right-handed shooter, but if you are a lefty, guess what? They now make a target pistol just for you. Accuracy-wise, both of these pistols will shoot. Hitting a six inch plate at 50 yards, uh, I can hit it a lot more times than I miss it. Now, and that's just using regular bulk ammo. Both of these pistols would be great pistols for the first time shooter or even a rimfire collector. Now, how reliable are they compared to each other? I will tell you this, they both work about 98% of the time. And you're probably saying, Plankster, why don't they work 100% of the time? Well, if you ask that question, guess what? You're probably new to rimfire shooting. Well, semi-automatic rimfire shooting. 22s are notorious for light primer strikes, um, also stovepipes and failure defeats. That's just the nature of the beast. Now, they are reliable. Keep them clean. They're going to work 98, 99% of the time like any rimfire pistol that you would own. I've got rimfire pistols that cost two to $300 that shoot very well. That's 98% reliable. And I've got $3,000 22 pistols that shoot about 98% of the time. You've got to keep them clean. That is the key to rimfire. The last thing that we need to talk about is the price. What are the prices, MSRP, on both of these handguns? Now, the Smith & Wesson Victory, you can find them on Gun Broker for around $350 to $370, which is a good price for a good target pistol, and you can't go wrong with it. The Mark IV, when you can find it, you're, they're going to be selling between $450 and $475. So this pistol actually cost about $100 more than this pistol. However, you can find flash sales where you can find this one for probably about the same price as this one. Um, but if you choose either one of them, it's a great buy. Now I have owned several, well not several, I own a couple of Victories and I own a couple of Mark IVs. I like them. I grew up shooting this pistol. I'm more comfortable shooting this pistol. However, I'm fixing to do a video. Yes, I said fixing. That's why we say it in Tennessee. I'm fixing to do a video on the ultimate Smith & Wesson victory. You ought to see what this pistol is going to look like when I get done. Um, and I will go ahead and tell you, it's probably my favorite 22 pistol of all time, especially one of my favorite builds, and I have built a lot of them. But if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I hope I have made your choice a little bit easier, but I may have just confused you more. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, y'all be safe and keep linking.